I am Vinny Tortorich. Folks, your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You may be soft and succulent at the beginning of this process, but hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean, guaranteed, just like the woman on the other mic. Folks, Miss Gina Grant. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, so much going on. I just had to put on a little more lip gloss because I realized it's, it's it's off. There we go. That's better. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a new diet that, you know, they always have to come up with the, you know, we have the Mediterranean, we have the blue zone, we have the paleo. We have that, 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 that. This is one I've never heard of before. And first, I just want to know if you've heard of it. Have you heard of the portfolio diet? No, this is, <laughs> God, I can only imagine where you're going with this. Well, it's, it's kind of whatever it's it's kind of you won't be shocked to hear what it is but and i don't think you'll be shocked to hear who's toting it and touting it as the new greatest thing i'm pretty sure it's harvard university um saying everybody stop what you're doing get on the portfolio diet and it's 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 a lot of you know sort of normalish foods but i'm just going to give you a rundown of of the things that you are the only things you are supposed to eat okay uh, so they want in the fruit cat category, we got avocados, technically a fruit, pears, apples, oranges, bananas, kiwis, peaches for vegetables. They got okra, eggplant, Brussels sprouts and turnips. We got, you know, our nuts, uh, almonds, walnuts, cashews and the very carby pistachios uh, seeds, um, whole grains, oats, quinoa, brown rice, barley legumes. They want the black beans, the kidney beans, the lentils, chickpeas and lima beans and Finally, the most important thing, your soy proteins, tofu, tempeh, uh, soy milk, soy cold cuts, and soy veggie burgers. You know how you just plant soy cold cuts and they sprout out of the ground. Um, so that is what you're supposed to be. Oh, for healthy fats, please cook your food in margarine and vegetable oils. And uh, I had to look this up. It says vegetable oils with plant sterols. Apparently, a sterile is... a uh, it, it acts like cholesterol, but it's supposed to lower your cholesterol. I'd never heard of it. And once again, in the you won't be shocked category, so many people reported losing weight and having better heart health um, when they filled out their questionnaires and were asked just in their opinion, had they been doing this correctly? Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. I'm, I'm taking just the foods. I've never heard of this before. You just said this. Okay. I'm taking just the foods you mentioned. That's the entire diet? Yeah. What's different between that and the vegan diet? I haven't heard I, nothing about dairy. There was nothing about red meat or fish, pescatarian eggs. No, I guess nothing. So the portfolio diet is another word for vegan diet? Because... I, you must be right. And also, it's not a non-processed diet because they want you to eat soy cold cuts and soy veggie burgers. Right. Well, you know. And margarine. Yeah, I, I just um, I, I just recorded this morning with uh, the great Zoe Harcomb um, from Cambridge. You know, very smart woman, several degrees. Um, Nina Tai shows. By the way, folks, these are, you know, we're recording this ahead of time. Go listen to the Friday shows. Andrea uh, Bertaglia from Italy is going to be back on. Nina Tai shows is coming back on. Uh, ben Bigman was on last week. Zoe Harcomb. Um, uh, Jen uh, Unwin. It, it's, it's a rogues gallery of everyone that wants to be on the show right now because of the last debacle Harvard put out there <clears throat> a week ago saying that eating red meat even twice a week will cause type two diabetes. There is no way that you can eat red meat 10 times a day and you cannot get type two diabetes. Type two diabetes is uh, what happens when you have, uh, when you can't uh, regulate insulin. Right, sugar. Uh, and that only happens from sugar. We used to call it sugar diabetes, but the T. Chan School of Health over at Harvard, uh, T. Chan was a vegan, um, and gave him, I want to say $350 million at one time. So oh. school after him and, and Walter Willard. And he's ruining people's lives. I begged this man to come on my last movie, Beyond Impossible, begged him. He said, no, I'm too, and I'm, I'm too small. I'm small fries to him. Well, guess what? My movies get seen by millions of people. 
And that's not me blowing smoke up your ass. Hell, go look at YouTube, whereas my movies are seen fewer on YouTube TV than anywhere else, and they have five and 600,000 views on those channels. You can imagine what they're getting on Amazon right? and uh, around the world. We're in the millions. But man, I'm, I'm small. I'm small potatoes. Yeah. And so, you're not just bullshitting because you have an entire part of the movie dedicated to trying to get him on. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to get him on. I tried to get all of the vegan overlords on. And I wasn't going to try to trick him up. I wanted to have discourse. I was trying to figure it out. Right. Right. So but but they you know, he didn't want to do that. And now they're you know, they know that vegans got a bad name. It's got a negative connotation to it, just like um, the, the term woke was great. Right. Everybody was woke. Right. And, and now woke has a negative connotation. Vegan right. has a negative connotation. If these words go too far, and then they tried to go with plant-based, too close to vegan, still negative connotation. So now what? They're going with something else, the portfolio diet? Portfolio diet. And this isn't just Harvard. Um, I, On a personal level, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. My husband just went to his, not to be ageist, but elderly general practitioner that he's been going to for a while that gets... Uh, you know, advice like uh, maybe try having leeches or, you know, let me go to my apothecary. But he said, oh, your cholesterol is a little higher than I'd like it to be. Let's not do anything yet. Just make sure you're staying away from meat, butter and dairy. Makes no sense. And who whoever said that having high cholesterol has anything to do to heart disease? Because it doesn't. Zero. Zero. That, you want to know what the number is? It's not uh, you can't squint and get to one. It's zero. <laughs> Cholesterol has nothing to do with heart disease. That's been proven over and over and over again. But then you talk about triglycerides and A1Cs and, you know, maybe you've got your attention. Yeah. Yeah. And triglycerides that come from what? Oh, yeah, just a lot of sugars, and a lot of grains. Right. That'll raise your triglycerides. Yeah. So, yeah, here we go again. So uh, this is, this, it's funny. Like you said, here we go again. Everything old is new again. My my husband's very, very elderly doctor says, you know, protect your heart, stay away from meat, butter, and dairy. And the brand newest diet, you know, in basically 2024, the, the newest thing you could do is to stay away from those things. But it doesn't make any sense because... Because we we cracked the code, I thought. You know, people understood that, like the paleo diet, that meat is good for you and all these processed sugars, that's the thing that's causing cancers. And why are we going back? Because, it, you see, and that's what Zoe and I talk about, Nina, we all talk about it. It's like, yeah, we have a grassroots effort. And people, look, when you have an N1 experiment, you go, okay, N1. But then when you have a gazillion people doing it, like your husband and everyone else, and right. they're going, wait a minute, I've gotten healthier doing this. It's not N1 anymore. It's an epidemiological study. And it, this thing started rising. So what do they do? They take people like me and Ken Barry and, and Sean Baker and all of the, the people that started this, and we get throttled. We get throttled on YouTube. We get throttled on I, if I showed you my Instagram and showed you what's been happening for the past seven or eight weeks, you will go, this is impossible. They've taken thousands of people away from me. Thousands. The, the thing I don't understand is, and I know this is kind of out of the mouths of babes, but what you don't have, you're not a conglomerate. Like you're not an empire. Like what would you have to gain by telling people how to eat that would be of of personal gain for you. I, you know have I, mean? not, I have nothing to gain. After I almost died of cancer, I decided to get on the internet and tell the truth. And guess what? Some people don't want to hear the truth. Unfortunately, people don't want to hear the truth. And when people like me start telling the truth and we start getting people to pay attention, and then more and more people pay attention and they become pseudo celebrities and they start their thing and they get people to pay attention to them, then this other group looks around and goes, wait a minute. These people are not only talking, but people are listening and they're proving something. So they go to YouTube, they go to Facebook, they go to all these places and go, you need to throttle these people back. Get rid of them. I just, it, it just, I guess I'm just missing. I mean, who's behind it? Big, big soy? 
because there was a guy we've there, talked there about are a lot the of show. people behind it um you know bill gates is behind it there are a lot of people there's not right. the p protein yeah well no he wasn't p protein that was someone else but bill, oh, that was uh J james cameron yeah you know, if you watch my my third movie we show all the the bad actors in that movie we show who's behind this movement to get us away from eating real food the fact of the matter is we've ruined the soil around the soil around the world when you hear if you go back and listen to Zoe Harcomb, you know, we can't even grow food because we've stripped the soil of all of those nutrients. And the only thing that's going to get those nutrients back is if you let a bunch of cattle go crap on it for a while. That's the way we used to do it. But now we got to we got to make, you know, hydroponic this and that and the other thing. You're not getting the same nutrients from those vegetables. So good luck. It's all coming down to engineered crap. We were never meant to eat. How can you take a food? meat, you know, animal protein, dairy, eggs that we've been eating for tens of thousands of years and say, okay, stop doing that. Do this. It's better yeah. for you. That's insane. That's an insane premise. Yet more people, they go, well, I'm, I saw it on the internet. It's got to be true. Folks, the internet is not going to save your life. You need to become a critical thinker. You need to think for yourself. You got to stop relying on the internet. Internet's not going to save your ass. Sorry. And and that's the thing. It's like, it's all about rebranding. Like we were told to eat whole foods, whole foods, whole foods. Hell, there's a grocery store named Whole Foods that'll, you know, charge you, you know, 15 times what you're normally used to paying because it's called Whole Foods. But now the, you know, the, the super cool people that we're supposed to be following are making like meat in like a vat in a lab. And now they're supposed to be the cool ones. So it's like, I, I, the the rebranding is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, when you said the portfolio died, I went, okay, let's hear it. Yeah. And I had never heard that word before, those two words put together ever until you said them, portfolio and diet. And here we are, you, you, you went and read the thing. When you read it, were you saying this is the vegan diet or did you wait? No, you said? I, I, it wasn't, it, it wasn't even the hook. It was just me telling you, you know, this, this is the newest fad. You know, it's kind of like that that thing. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna spell a word, and I want you without thinking. I just want you to say the word. Okay. Y e s. Yes. Y e s. Yes. Y e s. Yes. E y e s. Eyes. Okay, but you have a you have an exceptional IQ. Most people. Thank you. Go, yes. E s. Yeah. Right. I e s. When you hear something. You know, they, they, they lull you, they put you. And when I was selling cars back in the eighties, when I was in college, they, they would tell us, you know, the way you sell a car is you put someone to sleep. Mm. You, know, you get them, you get that ether. The first ether they get is that new car smell. When you take them for a test drive, get that ether in their brain, get them thinking about it. when you take them for a test drive, ask them where they're going on vacation so they can see themselves in that yes. new car. You know, it just keep putting lullaby, put them to sleep, get them in that booth and explain how this car, not, they're not going to be spending money on it. They're going to be saving money by giving you $350 a month. Yes. You, you got to put them to sleep. Yeah. Hypnotize them. Just hypnotize them. Until um, e -Y -E -S becomes a yes. Well, if we're going to do this. Now I have one for you because oh. I do this to my stepson all the time and he always messes it up and it's so oh, funny. God, I'm going to screw it up. Go on. No, you're going to do great. Either way, it's going to work. Oh, um, what is, what is G-H-O? Okay. What does M-O-S-T spell? Most. What does G-H-O-S-T spell? Ghost. What do you put in a toaster? Bread. You're a genius. He always goes, toast. <laughs> so, yeah. so anyway, yeah, those are. I had to ones. think about it. It's like, is it, <laughs> I don't have a toaster, but boy, if I had one, what would I put in? <laughs> Smart, you did it. You <laughs> see, I knew you were a genius. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, had... <laughs> I know your heart's like pounding. <laughs> All right, yeah. And let me give you. Let me. Can I give you one more? Yeah, Actually, I'm usually not very good at these. I got this. This was like 20 years. No, I'm sorry. Back in you, it was about 40 years ago. I was at a dinner one night, and someone brought this up, and it's. Name three sports that in order to succeed, you have to go backwards. And I'll give you a hint. Okay. All three were Olympic sports. Two of them still are Olympic sports. 
Okay. Well, the first one I know is right. I I only know sumo wrestling. You have to push someone backwards. No, <laughs> but let me but think. In order to succeed in that sport, you got to be going forward. Because you. Oh, gotta, true. You gotta okay. You in order backwards, gets knocked out of the ring. That's true. That's true. In order to succeed, you have to go backwards. In order to to succeed. You have to go backwards. In order to win, you must go backwards. Three sports, all three were Olympic sports, two still are. More I, can't even, I can't even think of one. Hold on. Swimming? Like the backstroke? Backstroke is one of them. Okay. You go backwards. That's one um, of them. Uh, shot put. But that's no, pe forward. people always go with that. No, you you, 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 <laughs> you throw the thing forward. You throw it yeah. out of the back of the ring. You're not going to get a, a score. <laughs> okay, hold on. This is uh, uh, ice skating, like uh, gymnastics, backflips. No, no, because that's all subjective. Oh, yeah. It's got to be an objective sport. It God, I don't know where the Russian judges decide <laughs> just to treat the Russians right. I give up. Okay, rowing. So yes. the, the two people always get is backstroke and rowing. Yes, obviously and rowing. So we're at a restaurant back in the 80s and someone said, well, backstroke. And was, yeah, that's obvious. And someone said rowing. And that was obvious. And the guy who gave us the test said no one ever gets the third one. No one ever gets it. And people were saying, well, you know, high dive, don't they have to go backwards? And right. No, they, they, you're going forward into you're the pool. You're still going forward into the pool. Yeah, yeah it's like, you, you know, you're not going to, if you go backwards, you're going to the sky. And I like right. the sky competition, but it doesn't <laughs> exist. The third one, I went, oh, wait, he gave us the hint that two of them were, all three were Olympic sports. So the one that was cut out had to be from the Greek, the original Olympics. Yeah. And it's a feat of strength. Oh, wait. And I got it right away. I'm going to of give you a chance. Of course you did. It's a feat of strength. Uh, it was one of the original. It's not arm wrestling. Uh, uh, I'm twisting my arms to see. Yeah, I was like, what sport is that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Tug of war. Oh, shit. Wait, that was an Olympic sport? That was a, a feat of strength, yeah. I thought that was just for summer camp. Oh, of course. That, that was an original Olympic sport. Wow, I get it. I kinda mean, like, it should be. Kind of like Festivus is feats of strength. <laughs> That's right. Got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> oh, I love that. All right, so let's do one more. You got one more? Yes. This one, enough? now, you know, I, I know very little about HIT training, and I know you're constantly tweeting people back about these types of things and be in zone two and blah, 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 blah. And this kind of reminded me of that. Now, I what I don't know about hit, hit training could fill the Grand Canyon, but this did intrigue me. Um, so essentially, you know, it's going, well, 10,000 steps a day, that's all BS. And, you know, we don't know where we came up with that number. And OK, fine, even though for, you know, normies like me, it's a great goal just to make sure we're getting out and moving every day. But apparently... Um, there's something even better when it comes to preventing heart attacks and strokes. It's not just, you know, leisurely walking for 10,000 steps. Apparently what the, the, the new goal we should be uh, trying to get to every day is to, to climb between five and 10 floors, five and 10 stairwells that the climbing and that getting your heart rate up in that sort of shortish burst does a lot more for your heart health than just your leisurely, you know, evening walk. And I guess I can see that, but I would love for you to speak to that because I'm really out of my element with that. It's a short burst of high intensity exercise. And they but say that you walking get walking up the stairs. No one, well, they want you to run up the stairs. I, mean, I know. I, I know. I don't know if uh... no, no. when you go up the stairs, it's slightly higher. You're still in zone one. But you're say really you're in zone two. You're say instead of. Room. But say instead of walking around the neighborhood, you are going to a, a office building and you're going to do 10 flights of stairs instead. Now, okay. do you have a preference? Uh, I've actually done that. You know, there used to be a thing in downtown L.A. in one of the taller buildings where there would be the stair climbing competition once mm. a year. 
And since, according to LA Magazine, I was the king of the stairs down in Santa Monica, <laughs> people always wanted me to go down there and do that. Um, but when you're climbing stairs with purpose and you're going for it, yeah, that's a thigh burner. Right. I could get you to zone four real quickly on 10 flights of stairs. But look, here's the problem. I'm I'm good with 10,000 steps a day. I tell people, if you can double that, knock yourself out. It's right. tough when you have a job and you sit in a cubicle or whatever. But I think it's formidable to, because 10,000 steps is damn near five miles. Yeah. Right. And if you can work that in in a day, right. you're doing better than you were before. Is it a fad? Was it a, a thing? Yeah, all, all of that stuff. But as I tell everyone, all exercise is good. We were not meant to be sedentary. Not meant to be sedentary. Look, I just bragged on the last show that I did two hours of aerobics today. Right? Yeah. I feel like it was a bad day because I didn't get to the gym. Right. Right. I had meetings all morning. I had phone calls. I had everything else. But I did have this two-hour period to watch. Diana and I had, you know, swim. Nyad, yeah, the movie. Yeah, the movie. And I went, oh, good. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to take a quick shower and Gina's going to be on the thing, right? So I feel like a loser doing two hours of, you know. And by the way, I'm not telling everyone you got to do two hours of aerobics per day. I didn't get to the gym today, right? And which is something I like to do. And you go, wait, what are you doing at the gym if you're doing two hours of aerobics? I like to lift. I like to move heavy things. Your body is a use it or lose it proposition. And I like to move it every day and do something. I don't hit the weights every day, but I try to hit them on most days. Right. Well, and I think about as I get older, as my parents, and my mom gets older, as people in my life get older, it is one of those take care of your body. So it'll take care of you things. I don't want brittle bone disease. I don't want to break a hip. I'm scared. Yeah. I don't want that. Look at it, Elaine Lalane, the most unfortunate oh. name in the world. That's the right. Still doing it. Jack Lalane's wife. Yeah. Jack did it until he died, right? The guy was healthy until he died. He was in his 90s. Right. Had a healthy life. Elaine is still around. Amazing. Healthy life. You know, and it's all because they use it. You got to use your body or it just goes away. So in your mind, and I always appreciate this about you and feel free to pick one, but in your mind, it always seems like these, you know, well, this is slightly better than this. And this trend is now outpacing this trend. And that's not really what you're about. You know, it, when I say, well, what should I do? Should I climb 10 flights of stairs or should I go on my walk? And your answer, which I, I should have expected is don't care. Pick one. Yeah. My answer is yes. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, look, I could have gotten off the bike at one hour and just cut out the, the rowing machine and still saw the movie by working out behind me. Right. right? I, I could have done that, but it's like, ah, I'm doing this. I'm into it, you know, because I had to take a meeting right in the middle mm. thing. So, you know, I was still on the bike and, and Chris called and we had to talk for 20 minutes. So that's what happens, right? I still got my workout in. Right. Right. So it wasn't exactly what I wanted, but guess what? It all comes out in the wash because tomorrow I'll be in the gym, you know, doing that, you know, pumping iron. And you're not one of these people who's ever who's looking to game the system going, well, wait a second. If I just do this, then I don't have to do this. That's not your that's so that's so micro focused. And, I, you know, we're always looking, you know, you love bro science. Nobody loves bro science like Vinny. He loves to biohack and hack the body. No. You just get out there and you do what we've always done, which is eat foods that aren't made of plastic and move your body. Look, I will be the first to admit, if there's a hack out there that if there's a shortcut for the body, I will be the first one to tell you guys about it. I will be the first one to do it. <laughs> there's no hack. You can't hack your life away. There's no hacking you. It, it, you it, this is it. You know, it, it's, you know, it, it's the long way home. Right. Right. It's, it, it, there's no two ways about it. You're right. And you've said this to me many times, and I know you've been saying this a, lo a lot longer than you've known me, but I never understood it. Like at first when I was just getting to know you and just getting to know your crazy ideas about not eating grain, which and putting full fat milk in your coffee. And I was like, thank you. Goodbye. 
you said something else that was confusing to me at the time. And now I really like it when you say, you know, abs are made in the kitchen and exercise is the fountain of youth. And I love both of those phrases. And I would love for you to, even though maybe our your listeners, your people have heard them a thousand times, I think it bears repeating to just give a little love to each of those statements. Yeah. You know, you're not going to spot lose weight. You're going to take it off in the, in the same direction that you put it on. Um, you can't, you know, you can do abs all day long. You won't see your abs. Let's go back to the aforementioned sumo wrestlers. Those guys are in incredible shape. They have abs underneath that big tub of fat they have on their stomach, right? You have to be strong to do that sport. All the linemen in the NFL, if you cut all that fat away from their midsection, you would see an, an incredible body. and a, they, they would look more like the tight ends. Mm -hmm. that, that would be the Tra Travis Kelsey's of the world, Gina. Thank you. I'm familiar now. But, I mean, that's what a lineman is. Travis Kelsey, but with the weight. So do they right. eat, do you feed a lineman differently? Oh, they eat way differently. Okay. They, they that makes actually sense. eat a lot of grains. Yeah. Because they, they want that a lot of red meat too, because they, they need to have the strength. They work out like animals, right? But, you know, when they're popping into someone else, they need that extra girth. Now, there was a period a few years ago where defensive linemen were getting fatter and fatter and fatter. And, you know, now you'll see these guys and they're much leaner. Right. Because they figured out, wait, yeah, you you can stuff the line, but we need you in the backfield. Right. right? Quinlan uh, Williams, we need you in the backfield. Right. So they, they get these guys to cut 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds. And, you know, they're still 300 pound animals that will engulf an entire backfield and peel them off until they find one with the ball. But that's what they do. Right. These guys were getting up there. And well, and the, yeah, they're different now. Just in a few years, I mean, go look at them a few years ago and go look at them now. They, most of them are smaller. Well, what I think of, because I have a very limited frame of reference, is like the old school, like, you know, Super Bowl shuffle bears, like, you know, refrigerator Perry and guys that are just coming at you like just giants. Well, Perry was the only one on that team that, that was that size. Ah. Uh. Most of those guys today wouldn't make it in the league. That's the crazy part. Mm. Not fast enough. Not. It's crazy. It's crazy where we've come with that sport. Sports science is just, just blown up. But the, but when you say, you know, they need that extra weight and so they eat accordingly, that makes me think of what you said about the gladiators. Yeah. And so unless, unless you're a sumo wrestler, lineman, or gladiator, Go ahead and, and and give the carbs a rest. Yeah. Look, I mean, the only way you're going to get abs is by doing it in the kitchen, by eating right. But that that will not get the only way to build muscle is in the gym. And there's no hacking. You could take all the creatine you want. You can take. And by the way, do steroids work? Absolutely. If you want to basically kill yourself or die young or have you know cancer when you're 30. More of these kids, you, you see all these influencers, women built like men now on Instagram, ripped out like men. A lot of these kids die. They die. It is your deal with the devil. It's signed yeah. this contract. You'll have everything you think you want for 15 minutes and then it's over. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, you know, I, I wish I could go grab these people and shake them and go, you're not doing yourself any good at all. So... That's the way that go. And folks, if you want to do some good for yourself and you're a step parent, even if you're not a step parent, you want to go get my extra mom. It's uh, if you go to vinnytotteries.com, click through the banner um, and go get my extra mom, Gina Grad's book. She's working on other books, my extra dad. Yep. And, I was um, I was told to slow down. My illustrator's going, can you give me a minute? But the illustrations are so cute and they're so beautiful and coming along really well. But yes, My Extra Mom, a children's book about having a step parent, lots of fun activities in the back. And my Instagram page, My Extra Family. Please follow me over there. Interact with it. It's a lot of fun. It's something I'm very passionate about. Go check out everything Gina's doing. She also has another podcast. If you want to hear that that velvety voice more than a <laughs> podcast. She's on with Brian Bishop, the Gina and Brian show, the official podcast of LA magazine. I'm a fan. Thank you. Uh, and you guys might be a fan too. So go check that out. 
Uh, you know what to do with me. Let's see. This is coming out before the 30th, I think. Let me just look. I'm going to look too. Gabby and Leona. This is coming out on the 20th. Wrote... Hmm. The 25th? 20... No, 27th. Se no, it's 22nd. Oh, second. I'm glad you told me. 22. So, folks, go right now and um, <clears throat> sign up for vinnytotaries.com forward slash VIP. And uh, you guys will be the first to know about this new beta group we're starting. It's a community. And we're talking about all sorts of great things that we're going to do. It won't just be the two meetings that you will get to listen to every week and be a part of. But we're putting together other stuff that you guys are going, you know, where, you know, deals and, you know, just where we give you freebies, you know, like I'm going to try to open up one of the things I'm trying to figure out is can I open up my whole catalog to you guys of all 2,400 some odd podcasts for free. Once you're a member of this, you know, I'm, I'm talking to lips and I'm trying to figure out how that works because right now you have to pay a fee for that. Right. So, like, you guys can get that for free and you'll be able to get access to the uh, NSNG ebook for free. Even I mean, Most of you guys probably have it. And then there's going to be other stuff. I'm talking to other people along the way to figure out how we can have tools to help you guys down the road. Um, this right. is a better group. That's why, you know, we're getting you guys in at a special price. You want to be part of that. So uh, go do all of that. Gina reminded me of a couple of different songs here. Uh -oh. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I might have to play both of them. But I'm oh, going to play no. the first one first. So on behalf of Gina Grad, my name is Vinny Tortorich. Put life into living. And let's do it with Tony Katane on the hood of a Jaguar. <laughs> White snake. Here I go again. <laughs> <laughs>